Hi guys, welcome to part 2 of material shader effect and in this tutorial you're gonna learn on how to create a growing effect using 3d object on the face. So first thing is to actually uh, to go through this whole thing you need to have a 3d object. So before I could import a 3d object I'm gonna use preset 3d uh, mesh over here. So for that just go to object panel add new and uh, look for face mesh okay so if you look at this this is actually a mesh and there's actually already a material of growing effect on this mesh which means it's gonna grow from the bottom over here all the way to the top so basically doing a vertical growing effect so how are we going to do that so the first thing that you got to do is click on face mesh and then click on material add new and then look for graph empty and then press ok now so you will be having a white one and when i double click on graph empty on the resource panel you'll be able to see it the, it's uh, there's only one node called shader all right and i'm going to change the color okay so that's where basically the uh, growing effect on start so i'm going to click on add node and then look for texture texture to the parameter and I can just link it here and yeah so I do have this and for me to actually add an effect I mean a texture I need to import one from the resource panel so add new import files and then look for wood open and then go to custom map click on this all right so you can see it's basically kind of like a wood uh, texture on the face. Okay, I'm going to use this texture right now to actually make it more like a growing effect. So, so I'm going to just uh, change this custom map to this text. Okay. All right. Now, now so this is how it looks like so yeah so how can we create a growing effect so first let me just cancel this thing out and then double click open it from the side and so you can look at over here uv chords right change this to custom and i'll explain to you in about uh, in a bit on uh, what is this i mean what uv chord really mean using that okay so as soon as something you, uh, you change the setting to custom you will have an input that you can actually uh, plug uh, just plug in from another node so why is this important why are we trying to actually create over here so let me just show you another step first if i can go there add node and then i'm gonna look for uh, i'm gonna look for uv okay. surface uv caught okay zero i'm going to look for zero then connect it here and then this one will be connected to and this will be connected here now why are we adding the uv cord okay before we could actually understand i mean for you to understand better about uv cords it's very simple so surface uv cord means uv coordinates so that's what this c-o-o-r-d really means so if i click on this icon it really shows uv zero coordinates of the surface so think of it this way this is basically a mesh all right there's a mesh on the face right now so when you add a surface uv coordinate what happens is that there's going to be a 2d plane being projected on the 3d mesh so when you are projecting a 2d plane on a 3d mesh you will have two channels or i would say two directions where these uv coordinates will be used so u stands for x axis and v stands for y axis so that's basically it so whenever you are like trying to like i mean uh, whenever you add a surface uv coordinates you just need to understand that this is basically a 2d plane being projected on a 3d mesh and uv stands for x and y axis respectively okay so why are we creating this uv coordinates uh, i mean surface uv coordinates here so the idea is actually to create a growing effect so growing is a, effect is basically growing you want to make sure there's a starting point 
uh, uh, I mean, there's a starting point and also there's an ending point, which means it's going to grow from point A to point B. And Surface UV Cord allows you to do that, which means it's going to allow you to create an animation where it's going to grow from either from uh, in the Y axis direction or the X axis direction. So I'm going to show you on how to create that using Y axis direction. So that's exactly why we added the UV Cord in it. Okay. Now, let me just... Uh, cut this thing because we're not uh, we need to have a few settings over here we need to do a few things before we could actually connect it here so the first thing that we need to add over here is subtract add node and let me look for subtract okay why are we using subtract okay let me plug it this plug this thing in first. So when I plug this thing here, you can see the X Y. Uh, there's only two channels over here. There are two channels, and then it's being plugged into this. And this is basically subtracting A. I mean B from A, which means A is gonna like subtract B. And the reason we are doing this is very simple. We want to make sure that we are subtracting to create the growing effect. So let's say we have. Uh, uh, let's say we call it as one. Okay, let's call a cube as one. So whenever we are subtracting, what happens is that it's gonna let's say one, and then you subtract zero point one. What happens is the remaining is zero point nine. So it keeps on going up and up, and it created like it's growing from bottom towards the top because you are keep uh, you are actually subtracting the values. So the more you subtract from the one. It will skip on going uh, it will actually become smaller and smaller in the vertical uh, axis and that creates more like a growing effect okay so that's exactly what we're creating here now let me click on this you can see there's actually x and y axis but we don't want to use x and y axis we want to just use the y axis so for that cancel this thing right click add node i'm going to use split split allows you to access an input channels to whatever channels that you want so i'm going to just input it here and then you can see i have four channels but my input is only two channels so for that i need to change this to two channels so i can disable this and as soon as i disable the third one the fourth one will be disabled automatically so i don't have to care about that and then now since i told you just now i'm going to just change the y value plug this thing here and then now I already have the Y value plugged it here. I mean, I've actually piped this whole, uh, what do you call the Y channel here. Now what I need to do is, I need to take, I mean, I need to uh, connect this here. All right. So just ignore the, the look. I'm going to show you how it's going to move. So let me just double click. And then let me put 0.1. So you can see there's some movement right going from the bottom so you can see it. let's see if i put 0 0.5 okay 0 0.4 you can see there's a white layer over here and then it's keep on like i told you just now this whole uh texture is called i mean is uh let's say the value is one overall in y axis so whenever you're uh subtracting 0 0.4 0 0.3 0 0.5 it's becoming like smaller it creates that effect from the bottom so the ones which are like not like uh what you call visible will be in white and i'll show you how to actually change that color in a way in a bit okay now you have this tool okay now what we're going to do is we cannot straight away put it here because we also need the x-axis so for that just cancel this we're going to add another node called combine what combine allows you to do is that to combine I mean channels together so I'm going to create this I mean add this and then I'm going to add this here so you can, so you can see there are actually four here I just need to combine two so um, just need to click on this disable the third channel as of this I mean the, the fourth channel will be disabled by itself and then I'll connect it here so now you can see all right okay and then you see you don't want to keep on changing values over here so for that add node look for float parameter so what float parameter allows you to do is to actually change the values in the graph uh, or in the inspector panel under graph parameters so you can change it here but what i like the most is basically 
to add a ma minimum and maximum value under the float parity. Then you can see that I can actually just move it like this. Okay. Can you see? It? All right. So this is basically what we are trying to create, and we have actually created the whole animation right now. And okay, what we gotta do? There's one last step before we could actually start looking at the animation. Right click. Now, this is basically an animation that we have, or I mean, this is like an animation effect, but we need to have like a loop uh, effect. I will call like a time. It's like animation gonna run over the time. So I'm gonna create a node and look for ellipse. Uh, ellipse time. So ellipse time is basically if you look at. Uh, it's like total time elapsed, so which means it's gonna keep on like a run time thing, which are, which means it's keep on running. And then this is basically the time, and uh, what I'm gonna do is that I need to first test from zero all the way to one. That means it's canceling out. I want to make sure it's from zero negative one to zero because you see from zero to one, it basically goes from like you have texture and then you don't have texture i want it to be like you don't have a texture which is this and then it becomes a texture so that for that you need to actually have negative one to one and how do i know that we go to float parameter and then i click on the enable mean right let me put negative one and let me put zero and let me put here so you can see if it's negative one it's actually basically think of it like a blank one and then when I keep on moving, it, it basically fills it up more like a growing effect. Okay, so I have that. Now for me to use that on the time, right? Because I've got to get this value and put it under time. For that, I need to actually add another node called subtract. And why am I adding subtract over here? Is because uh, the time always starts from zero. So that means I need to actually have the time. I, mean, I need the time to start from negative one. So for that, I need a subtract. To subtract with what negative, uh, yeah, I subtract with one actually. I'm gonna subtract one. All right. So since I'm subtracting one, and then I need to add a node called clamp. So clamp allows you to actually set a minimum and maximum range. So you can see, clamps the value within a minimum maximum range so you will understand that you want to have a minimum and maximum value so what are the what is the minimum value negative one okay so you put it here your minimum will be negative one so you need to ch change that your maximum will be zero right because if you look at this it's zero okay then, then. negative one and zero okay now you have this all these values now i don't need this float parameter anymore because i'm not going to use it this is just for like me to like see whether it's working well or not so i'm just going to cancel this i take this i'm just going to plug it here so now you can see the whole effect is actually working now why is there a white like you know a white uh face thing on top of the face before you it's more like growing from white i mean changing color not like growing effect it's because this whole texture is actually pulling i mean whenever you look at okay you look at this when it's it's going from top i mean bottom to top on the white layer so i need to change the layer to a transparent one so that whenever whenever it's growing it's not like you can see it's white it's basically transparent how can i create that so actually i actually have created that and to create it very simple so let me just click on add new import that file okay i have something called pixel over here so all right so pixel based texture that i created by using photoshop so what i did was basically going to photoshop and then i deleted the top and the uh, one pixel from the top and one pixel from the bottom why so that whenever i'm moving from the uh, bottom to the top it's not like it's dragging it's dragging the transparent part of it it's not dragging the the whole uh, texture at the one uh, at one pixel over there i don't want it to be like that at all so it's more like tra dragging the transparent effect from that so yeah so that's exactly why i actually created this one called pixel okay now create uh, i mean click on graph empty and then this base texture i'm gonna click on base texture and put pixel 
once I've uh, changed this, you will be able, you will see the white. And the reason is very simple because the blend mode here is disabled. I should change this blend mode to alpha test because this is basically using a transparent effect because I took out the pixels, right? From the top and bottom. Since I took out both pixel, I mean the one pixel from top and bottom, it will be transparent. And in the, in um, 3d language i could call it like I, uh, people will call it as alpha right so it's more like alpha if alpha equals to one it's opaque if alpha equals to zero it's transparent so i need to put the blend mode under alpha test to make sure the transparent effect is there so when i refresh you can see the effect is running so that's exactly how you create a face uh, growing i mean a, an object growing effect over the face since you already create this on the face mesh what i can do right now is that i can actually add any 3d model on the face and just replace the material with whatever material i want to have and in this case i'm going to just have the shader empty material so let me just uh, give you that this okay so for this uh, on this case let me just delete this whole thing add new i'm going to create a new head binding and then import object since I already have a 3D model over here and I'll just drag and drop and then click on this change the material to graph empty so this is how it looks like I can just move inside of it okay all right now I can change this I've changed this to my graph empty material it used to be like something else but I changed it now when I click on refresh you can see the effect but the only thing is different for this 3D object is that it's going from uh, left to right if you look at it from the, uh, the the preview panel point of view is because the 3d object has a left to right for the vertical one supposedly it goes from like the bottom to top but it's going from left to right because the 3d models are because the model is actually re detecting this uh, what do you call the effect from left to right as if it's a vertical one okay so it doesn't really matter because end of the day you want to create that effect but, and you can actually create this growing effect on any 3d model just change the uh, what you call the material and you'll be able to use it so let me know if you guys have any questions i'll be very happy to answer those questions and we'll see you in the next video